Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Um, I know it's been a long day of work for our legislator friends and it's been a long day of advocacy and people taking action together. But welcome to our closing panel for Equality Illinois 2022 Virtual LGBTQ Advocacy Day. We appreciate all of you taking action with us throughout the day uh, and joining us for this really important conversation. Uh, my name is Moni Ruiz Velasco. My pronouns are she, her. I am the Deputy Director at Equality Illinois. And I'm so proud to be joined this evening by my co-host, Shannon Lynn Parker, who's on the board of Equality Illinois and also the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Howard Brown Health. Also joining us are um, from the Black Legislative Caucus, Representative Kim Buckner, from the Asian American Caucus, Representative Gong Gershowitz, and Senator Christina Castro will be joining us any minute now, who it will be joining us from the Latinx uh, Legislative Caucus. We are very, very excited for this conversation. Our intersecting identities as LGBTQ people inform and impact our experience in, in the world, in our communities, um, in the cities and across the state, obviously. Um, as a queer Latina, as a mom, as a daughter of immigrants, there's so many issues that I face given my multiple identities. And I know that's similar for, for all of us. At Equality Illinois, we're committed to the visibility of our intersecting identities and to ensuring that those of us who come from historically marginalized communities have a seat at the table where our voices can be heard. More and more of us are identifying as members of the LGBTQ community. And so this panel is especially important at this time. A recent Gallup poll showed, showed that at least 7% of all American adults identify as LGBTQ with the highest group being Latinx folks at around 11%. So I'm particularly excited to be here with my co-host Shannon who is gonna kick it off uh, with our legislators. Thank you, Shannon. Mm -hmm. No problem. Thank you, Moni. Well, hey, y'all. Um, I am Shannon Lynn Parker. And as Moni said, I am on the Board of Equality Illinois. I'm also the Director of Community and Strategic Partnerships at Howard Brown Health. And I really do look forward to this important discussion with these members here of the Illinois General Assembly. Um, and as Moni said again, to reiterate, who do represent the Black, Latinx, and Asian American caucuses, each of these legislators are such strong champions for our LGBTQ community. So again, thank you all so much for that. And without further ado, I do want to welcome Senator Christina Castro. Oh. Um, Christina Castro represents- Shannon, I'm sorry. She's jumping in a little bit late. So maybe we oh, can start Oh, my with, apologies. Uh, yep, that's okay. All right. Well, then I'm going to I'm gonna yeah. jump to actually my state representative, Cam Buckner. Um, who represents the 26th district since 2019. Cam, since you're my state rep, I'm gonna find something for you to do. I don't know what, I'm gonna find something. Uh, <laughs> and also to Representative Jennifer Gong Gershowitz, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, represents the 17th district and has been in office since 2019. So, if it is okay with you all. Um, can I go ahead and ask y'all the first question? And you all can talk to me about how important respective caucuses is to support LGBTQ communities in Illinois. Is that okay? All right, so um, let's start off with um, state rep Jennifer Gershowitz. All right, so tell us why it's so important um, to your respective caucus to support the LGBTQ communities in Illinois. And the same question for you also, Representative Buckner. Um, well, thank you. First of all, it's an honor to be with you and, and with my esteemed colleagues. Um, I, you know, really to have a conversation about um, the importance of our uh, standing in solidarity with one another. Um, and the importance of building relationships um, here as colleagues um, as we work together um, to represent marginalized communities who so often have been left out of the conversation. And I think I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge um, what today uh, means to the Asian American Caucus. 
um, today is the anniversary of the Atlanta shootings. It was um, one year ago today um, that I was preparing to present the TEACH Act in the House Education, Elementary Education Committee. It was a solemn reminder for me as an Asian American woman of the danger of marginalization, um, the persistent uh, racialization and fetishization of Asian American women, um, and the dangerous consequences of stereotypes and marginalization for especially um, marginalized communities, um, Asian American women um, and uh, LGBTQ women of color in particular um, face discrimination, marginalization that often it has dangerous consequences like we saw with the Atlanta shootings. Um, so today is, is not only you know, a, rem a reminder of the importance of standing up, um, the importance of building empathy, um, but also the importance to, to your point and your question of standing in solidarity with one another. Um, it was the, the Black Caucus, the Latino Caucus, who were the first to stand in solidarity with the Asian American community to support the TEACH Act, um, which is the Teaching Equitable Asian American Community History Act. Illinois became the first state in the country to require the teaching of Asian American history in our schools. These efforts like the LGBTQ education bill that I was proud to support and co-sponsor in my first term are about fundamentally building equity, building empathy, building understanding, and ensuring that people who are from our communities see themselves, but also so people who are not from our communities know who we are and so that we're seen. Um, so our, our alliances together as minority caucuses under the, you know, under the dome here are critical um, to passing legislation um, that I think moves us forward you know, in, in our communities and, and throughout our state. Thank you so much. So uh, Representative Buckner, the same question for you. Um, you know, why is it so important and how your respective caucuses support LGBTQ communities in Illinois? If you could answer that for us, that would be great. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll start off by um, once again uh, echoing the, the thanks to to, to Moni, um, to, to Mike and the team at Equality, Equality in Illinois, and Shannon. Great to see you, um, and it's great to be here with my my esteemed colleagues and, and friends who I know take this work extremely extremely seriously. Um, you know, I, I was thinking a little bit about this earlier today, uh, and, and I know that. You know, at the intersection of race, gender, and sexual orientation, there lives uh, a lot of pain that naturally brings us together, right? Uh, but there also lives a great amount of power. Uh, and, and, that, and that power uh, is really what we want to uh, wrap our arms around and um, kind of put into motion as we look at policy uh, that, we, uh, that we move on the state level that really effectuates change in our, in our communities. Um, at the core, and uh, Jennifer did a great job of, 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 of kind of painting this picture for us. Um, at the core, we have to understand that none of us are safe or none of us are uh, at, you know, in an equitable spot unless all of us are. Uh, and uh, our, our agendas cannot be exclusion, exclusionary. Um, they have to be inclusive. Uh, because I, I remember the, 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 the pain in, in Jennifer's voice uh, this time last year, and even today on the on the floor when uh, she marked the one year anniversary of what happened in in Atlanta, um, I remember the advocates from Equality Illinois uh, and the Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus and the and the um, Latino Caucus uh, when uh, folks like Justin Slaughter, who uh, is the chairman of the criminal uh, uh, judiciary committee in the House, but was the champion of many of our um, legislative uh, movements when it came to criminal justice post George Floyd in 2020, uh, when, when Justin stood up and talked about how personal this legislation was to him as a black man who grew up on the south side of Chicago, as a black man whose father was a civil rights attorney. Um, and and the, the support that we got from uh, communities across the state 
who just want things to be fair, want things to be equitable and equal and free. And so uh, this is important because as one of us go, all of us go, right? And this is something that um, we've got to continue to, to fight for. Uh, there will be many forces who will try to divide us because they know that we are stronger uh, together. Uh, and so it's incumbent upon those folks who don't want to see us uh, move forward and, and have progress. Uh, they, they, it's, part, it's, it's important for them to see us uh, not moving in lockstep. But uh, this is so important because um, this is not about us operating in silos. It's, op it's about creating a network uh, and a tapestry where we can ensure, once again, freedom, liberation, and equality for all of us. Thank you so much. Senator Castro joined us. Um, Shannon, if you want to uh, check in with her about that same question. Of course, of course, of course. Senator Castro, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> um, we just kicked off the conversation by asking the question of how do each um, of the representatives actually support LGBTQ um, issues in Illinois in their respective caucus? So, so the same question goes for you. I mean, if you could ask us, if you could answer that question for us, that would be great. Thank you all. I apologize, my camera is off. I actually had to go pick up my car before they closed. I had it at the shop. So my apologies for not being on camera just yet. Um, thank you for the question, Shannon. You know, it is a very important issue. Mostly, um, it, it's actually very personal to me. Um, I had a dear friend um, who was transgendered and I watched uh, her struggle uh, finding her identity, fighting against stigmas. And um, I remember when I first got elected to the role, I sat down with her to talk about what could make things, how can I help, you know, future folks who may go through some of these issues and fight these issues. And we had a very long conversation about that. Um, I've also had two members of my staff who have been openly gay um, and have supported them. They have also shared their personal experiences. And, you know, one of the things I find is, you know, I feel it's, I feel it's part of my duty to give a voice to those who feel like they don't have a voice, but also to fight stigma. You know, being Latina, um, there are certain stigmas in our, in our community, in our culture, and I feel it is my duty to kind of fight back on those stigmas. Um, and by supporting legislation, uh, by supporting events, um, supporting my community, and also reaching out to others to see how can we do better. And I think that's important when, I, when we look at legislation, um, when you talked about the bill that Mike and I worked on in regards to driver's license, giving folks an option, um, you know, non-binary. I, I think it was just a lot of the work and understanding what some of our folks um, in my district go through, but also those that are very close to me. And, and it, it is a very personal, um, it's very personal to me to, to constantly advocate for those issues. Um, so that way people are heard um, in our community and in the legislation. Thank you so much, thank you. Um, Moni, I'm going to pass it on over to you. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. Um, well, thank you all again uh, for being here with us. Um, and, um, you know, it's exciting to have this conversation um, as, as we move forward, uh, you know, together, right? Because I think as Representative Buckner said, I mean, together, we're going to be stronger and together, we're going to get things done. So I, I appreciate your candidness and being here. I also want to see if, if you want to tell us about some priorities from your caucuses that you want LGBTQ community members to know about that they may not be aware about, but that you think are important uh, for our LGBTQ folks to support. So if uh, you can give us an example of something or one or two examples of something that you really want to highlight for us um, so we can continue to engage people as we have throughout the day. Um, why don't we start with uh, Representative Bongershowitz and can go back to, since you started us off. Sure. Um, 
So one of the things that we have been working on, uh, not just this year, but in previous years, and sometimes things take uh, more than one session in order to really see them, you know, see them through. But we really uh, wanted to to get the administration um, to support additional steps to make uh, for language access. Um, so one of the things that um, is, you know, both, you know, a strength and, and sometimes a challenge in the Asian American community is just how incredibly diverse we are. Um, so there's not one language. Um, and written and um, spoken languages can sometimes be different. Uh, so, you know, for example, um, through state agencies, in order uh, to get uh, be, to be recognized as, as uh, bilingual and have bilingual pay, um, currently the standards are you know require you to be both fluent um, verbally and and in writing. Well, there are a lot of folks who speaking speak. Asian languages at home who might not uh, be uh, literate in that language because it is not an alphabetic language. So take uh, Chinese, for example. I always say Chinese is not a language. Um, you know, there's Mandarin, Cantonese, multiple dialects spoken, um, but the characters are unified, but not everybody um, is fluent in both disciplines because speaking uh, a, a language um, you know, speaking Cantonese or speaking Mandarin doesn't necessarily mean that, that uh, you're fluent in, in the written language, but for our state agencies, it really doesn't matter because all the forms are in English anyway. So the fluency required is really verbal fluency. So there's a disconnect there um, in terms of how we recognize fluency in terms of having competencies in our state agencies to serve the Asian American community in a way that is necessary and needed. And, um, you know, the, the challenges that we, you know, would have finding staff that would be, that would meet the, the bar for fluency as we, you know, currently define it. Um, so, you know, there are things like that, that, you know, frankly, you know, being a member of a newer caucus, um, I, a lot of people are surprised to find that uh, we did not have a single Asian American member of the General Assembly until 2016. Um, and just in that short time, we've grown from one to five, uh, one in the Senate, four in the House. Um, but in order to make, you know, create change, oftentimes requires having somebody there who understands your community. Um, and then to educate your colleagues. And again, that's about building alliances and, and helping to um, frame these challenges in a way that uh, your colleagues and advocates understand um, so that we know how to advocate for each other um, because none of us accomplishes anything alone. Um, every bill, every initiative we pass is a reflection of not only our community, but those who have stood in solidarity with our community. Yeah, thank you. That's super important. And I don't know if you just want to add how how can we get people connected to that? How do we how do people take action or what what would you want people to do to support your language access efforts? Yeah, so I will um I'll need to follow up and see if it is in uh, bill form. For a long time, um, this has been sort of an ask with respect to resources put towards um, things that, um, you know, we have um, existing in statute. But, you know, when, when we uh, move forward now, as we get closer to the budget process, um, I, I will reach out to you, Moni, and I'll make sure that I add um, some things that, you know, we could certainly use your support. Equality Illinois, um, you know, has, has been, um, you know, a powerful um, an ally in, in fighting for marginalized communities. And so we would very much appreciate um, the support of, of all of you in the effort to ensure that we can serve our communities better in the ways that matter. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Representative Buckner, are there uh, things that are priority for the Black Caucus that you would want um, LGBTQ community members to support, know about, and, and how can we go about supporting them? Yeah, thank, thank you for that question, Moni. Um, so uh, it's a question that I've heard a, a lot since January of last year, right? Um, and, and that's because uh, after the Black Caucus pillars passed, 
um, there were widespread questions about, about what do you do next, right? Uh, we, we were able to, with the help of uh, many of the folks on this call and many of our colleagues, uh, put together a, a, a package that was, you know, the most, I think, forward-thinking, forward-leaning, equitable um, legislative package in, in the history of, of this state legislature, absolutely, but I think uh, uh, of any state legislature in this country, I'm still building phone calls from colleagues from around the USA uh, asking, you know, how'd you do it, what you do, how can we um, duplicate it, uh, replicate it. Um, but with that being said, when, when folks, folks ask what's next, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the work that uh, the Black Caucus is um, focused on uh, this year uh, is um, defending those pillars, right? Finding ways to make sure that, well, one, that the pillars are funded, but also to make sure that uh, those of our colleagues who would rather the pillars never have passed, never had passed, uh, and who have tried to repeal and, and walk us backwards, uh, that we're not doing that. Uh, I know it's March Madness time, uh, and so the basketball fans will appreciate this. After you score, you got to get your butt back on defense, all right? <laughs> because um, that's the way that the game is played. And so um, a lot of the work that we're doing uh, is is you know um, predicated around making sure that that we defend those those pillars and, and make those pillars better. Um, I think one more thing that I will say is that um, we worked. And I have the pleasure of being the chief sponsor in this, but we've worked uh, on trying to find ways to address the the high rates of missing and murdered uh, women uh, around the state. But specifically, uh, I'm a Chicago, I'm a Chicago specific district. I mean, we've seen the numbers in Chicago and the in the south suburbs uh, skyrocket. Um, we were able to pass HB 3988 through the House, and now is in the Senate with uh, Senator Maddie, Maddie Hunter being the lead on it. Um, but it's, uh, it's on, uh, it's the task force for mission, missing and murdered Chicago women and girls. And I want to add that, um, you know, when we look at the influx of, of, of women and girls have, have come up missing, uh, it's also a, a, a huge number of, of transgender and gender non-forming uh, people who have been killed, uh, who are a part of this, this work that we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're fighting against the culture of fear, the culture of victimization, the culture of violence, um, against um, uh, people uh, around once again, around the state, but this goes specifically in Chicago. And, and so I, I would love for folks to um, to pay attention to that and, and, and support it. And the last thing I'll, I'll say, I think uh, Representative Dawn Gershowitz put, um, she, she said something that was extremely powerful and I think we may have skipped over it. Um, on the political side, representation, right? The fact that the Asian caucus didn't exist until recently um, and now, uh, not only uh, uh, do does the colleagues exist, but they're extremely strong. They're doing extremely um, um, important work on the policy side. We got to get people elected in order to, to to change the narrative and to have these conversations. Uh, had there not been uh, a, a burgeoning Asian American caucus, uh, I'm not sure that the Teach Act would have would have passed, right? Uh, and so we always talk about how important representation is. We got to send more folks who have lived experience and have a diversity of, of, of experience and a, and a diversity of demographic uh, to to Springfield, to your city hall, wherever, whatever, wherever it may be, um, to make sure that, that we are beating the drum and elevating the narrative as well. Yeah, that's super important. Thank you so much, Representative Buckner. Um, Representative Castro, same question for you. I'm sorry, Senator Castro, <laughs> the same question for you. Um, is there something that's a priority for the Latinx caucus this year or next year that you would want LGBTQ people to know about and uh, for us to get behind and support? Well, thanks, Moni. I actually had to pull up our, our Raices document that we have and it has pretty much all our legislative priorities for this year. And I think um, to add to one of my two colleagues, um, language access, but the key word is equity whether it's equity and representation between uh, legislators uh, with similar backgrounds to equity on boards and commissions, equity in regards to funding for our communities, um, equity as far as employment at the state level. I think that is the constant theme for the Latino caucus this year is just to make sure that um, there's equity across the board for you know our diverse communities. Um, I know we've worked um, 
with both all, you know, the Asian caucus as well as Black caucus on the earned income tax credit. Uh, so we've been working on that. Obviously, we have a lot of different components to healthcare, mental health services, uh, free and charitable care clinics, um, and, and the list goes on and on. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that all three caucuses are fighting for that are very similar, right? Because we all have a need in each of the caucuses for these very things. And it's no different for our LGBTQ community because there are members of our caucus that can benefit from that that are LGBTQ as well. So I think what you are, I think in the advocacy aspect is like we're all together in this and working together to reach a common goal actually helps not only help a community, but build it up. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Senator Castro. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back to Shannon to, to start wrapping up, but just wanted to thank you all for, for being here and for, being, uh, for all of your work and for championing LGBTQ rights and justice um, in Springfield and, and throughout. So, uh, but Shannon, go ahead and, and close us off. Of course, you said something so simple yet prolific. Um, Representative Gong Gershwin, you said none of us can accomplish anything alone, you know, and I think that is the reoccurring theme and the tie that binds. So thank you for saying that. Um, so to all of the panelists, thank you so much for your time and participation. Um, you know, it goes without saying that it's so important for all of us to come together and make our voices heard and take actions together. So again, thank you so much to our legislative leaders um, for your time and your insights. And lastly, I wanna pass it on over to Equality Illinois CEO, Brian Johnson. Shannon, thank you. Uh, Moni, thank you. And uh, I just wanna say a huge thank you to Representative Gon Gershwitz, Representative Buckner, and Senator Castro. You know, when we talk to each of these leaders about bills that we are trying to move to support LGBTQ plus equality. The answer we get back is not yes or no, I will support. It's what can I do to help carry this across the finish line? Um, and we are so grateful for their depth of support um, for full equality, not just for queer people in Illinois, but for all people in, in Illinois. Uh, and I wanna thank everybody who's joined us throughout this advocacy day uh, today. You know, I know that we kind of butt up against sometimes the complacency of, ine of inevitability, um, that uh, the belief that the arc of the universe is bending toward justice and we just need to ride it out. But we know that we get to justice by the hard work of uh, everyday people calling their representatives, calling their senators, working to advance legislation that's going to make our state truly the oasis of equality, dignity, uh, and justice, not only in the Midwest, across the country. So a deep thank you to everybody who participated today. And uh, I am incredibly grateful to be working shoulder to shoulder with each of you under the dome and with queer Illinoisans across the state uh, to, uh, to bring forth the future we all deserve. So with that, Moni, if there's nothing else, I think we can close it out. Yeah, thank you for, for being with us and um, yeah. We look forward to hopefully having our advocacy day in person next year. So stay tuned for that.